By now, you probably have heard about all the hype around MCPs or Model Contacts Protocol. In this video, I want to break it down exactly what an MCP or Model Contacts Protocol is, how it differs from normal tool call or function calls, and why all of a sudden there is so much hype around it. So just to give you a sense, MCP is from Anthropic, but Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI tweeted this, people love MCP and we are excited to add support across our products available today in the agents SDK and support for chat GPT desktop plus responses API coming soon. Anyone Google is taking notes of this. So Sandar Pachai, the CEO of Google posted this to MCP or not to MCP. That's the question. Let me know in comments. Interestingly enough, it's nothing new. This was announced and released back in November, 2024. So we're talking about almost four months ago. So here's the original blog post from Anthropic introducing the model context protocol. And this is supposed to be a new standard for connecting AI assistants to the systems where data lives, including content repositories. So one of the biggest problem with LLMs is that their knowledge are, is limited to the cutoff of their training data. Now, the question is, how do you enable a knowledge beyond that cutoff date? Well, there are techniques like RAG or tool calls or function callings that will extend the capabilities of an LLM. However, there is one big issue, how these tool calls or function calls are implemented. So let's say if you want to give access to the LLM to your calendar, email app, or certain database, you actually need to implement a custom API integration for each one of them. And each one of this custom integration will become a tool that the LLM can use to interact with this the external API or external database. So this is one simple solution that enables agents or LLMs to interact with the external world. However, there are two main issues. First, if the list of tools or the number of tools increases, the LLM could hallucinate in deciding which tool to use. The second is for each one of the tools, you are going to have a custom integration that you need to implement. There's no standard. If the underlying API implementation changes, you will need to update your tool or the custom integration that you have. This is where the model context protocol or MCP comes into play. So the idea is that you want to standardize the interaction between your tools and the LLM. We put another custom layer or standardization layer in the middle between your AI application, which could be an LLM or an agent, and the actual tool implementation. Now, irrespective, if you update your tool, the MCP standard or this standardization layer is going to remain the same. And whenever you are designing your implementations of your external tools, you need to follow the standard defined by MCP. Let's understand what exactly is, a, is this under the hood. So it's an open source protocol introduced by Anthropic that uses JSON RPC 2.0 messages to establish communication between three different components, host, clients, and servers. Hosts are applications running AI models. An example would be Cloud Desktop or AI-driven IDEs, for example, Cursor, Windsurf, that needs access to external data or tools. The second one is clients. These are modules within hosts are responsible for communication with servers, and, and, and they are required for maintaining connections and forwarding requests. So clients are modules that are running within the servers. So what exactly is a server? These are lightweight programs that each expose specific capabilities through standard model context protocol. These lets you connect to local data sources. So that would include files, databases, and services on your computer, or remote services such as external systems available over the internet through the API. So you need to have a server that is actually exposing either local data storage or remote services. Then you are going to have clients which are communicating with the server and hosts are the actual AI applications that are using the servers through the clients. Now, don't worry if it sounds complicated, I'm going to break it down. So to further explain how an MCP works, 
we're going to be using some material from a visual guide to LLM agents by Martin. This is an excellent guide. Link is going to be in the video description. So he has this visual in his blog post, which I really love a lot. So it really breaks down what hosts, clients, and servers are. Hosts are your AI applications like Cursor, Quad, OpenAI, Windsurf, and you can even create your own hosts for that matter. Then you have the clients that enable the communication between MCP servers and MCP hosts. Now there's a unified API that enables this communication. And an MCP server is interacting with external world through custom APIs or custom tools. So this implementation is very different from the normal function calls a tool usage, because in that case, you will have to implement your own communication protocol for different tools or APIs, and that is not really standardized. So by adding this MCP client and server, you're actually standardizing the protocol and the actual tools are going to be running on the MCP server. So that kind of extra abstracts away all the complexities from the MCP host. Okay, so to, to further break it down, we're going to look at this example from the same blog post. Now, in general, tools are important components of agentic frameworks, allowing LLMs to interact with the world and extend their capabilities. However, enabling tool use when you have many different APIs becomes troublesome as a tool needs to be manually tracked and fed to the LLM, manually described, and then manually updated whenever API changes. So this is what the normal tool usage looks like. So for example, if you have something like a prompt which asks for today's weather, then you need to provide a list of different tools that are available to the LLM. The LLM will decide which tool to use, make that call, get the response, and then feed those results to generate the final response, right? So all of this is happening through the LLM loop and you will have to manually track everything. Now we looked at uh, this implementation of the MCP and how does it unifies this API or the communication essentially, right? So now here's a quick example. So he says, let's assume you want a given LLM application to summarize the, la the five latest commits from your repository. The MCP host together with the client would first call the MCP server to ask which tools are available. So initially the LLM has no idea which tools are tools are available on a given server. It just has a list of servers that are available to this MCP client, right? So the host makes a request to the server to get a list of tools. Then the LLM receives the information and may choose to use a tool. It sends a request to the MCP server via the host, then receives the results, including the tool used, right? So the LLM will use the MCP host, get the list of the tools that are available, and then it will decide whether to use a tool or not. When it decides to use a tool, the MCP server will actually use that tool and will re return the results. And everything is going to be fed back to the LLM as a par part of the prompt plus the tools. And then the LLM will just use that those results to generate the final output. Now, there's one more very cool thing that is happening, which is important to keep in mind. In this case, since the MCP server can have a number of different tools available, you can have multiple MCP servers interacting with the LLM. And in that case, even if you have thousands of different tools through multiple different MCP servers, the LLM does not have to track those tools. Right. Normally, if the LLM has to make a tool call in an agentic workflow, then it first needs to see which tools are available. So let's say if there are thousands of tools, you will need to include those thousands of tools in its system prompt so that the LLM can actually see them. And then it will need to decide which tool to use. However, in this case, you have this another layer of abstraction, which really isolates the list of tools that are available from the LLM. So the LLM can just decide which MCP host or which MCP server to use through the MCP host that it's interacting with. And that will abstract away these multiple tool definitions and tool calls. Next, we're going to look at the three main components of an MCP server. So these are resources, tools, and prompts. Resources are file-like data that can be read by the client 
So think about these in API responses or file contents. Then you have tools or functions that can be called to perform actions like sending an email or querying a data. So that's the list of tools that are available on the MCP server. And then to orchestrate everything, you have prompts. These are templates for structuring interaction with the LLMs. So here is a, a slide from one of the presentation from Anthropic. With each server, you have tools, resources, and prompts. And all of them are exposed to the MCP client, to the, MC, to the MCP host. So again, tools can be model control functions invoked by the model. So this could be a retrieval tool, search tool, and as I said, it could be external API calls like sending a message or updating record from a database. Then you have resources. These are data exposed to the applications, files, database records, API responses. These are the outputs that you get. So those becomes resources. And now you have prompts, which are predefined templates for AI interactions. So document question answer. Think about these as prompt templates that the server is going to be using. Okay, so I hope this gives you a really good idea of what an MCP is, what are the different components, how they interact with each other, and how it works. Well, now the question is why it's getting so much traction all of a sudden. As I said, this is almost a four months old concept. Sean from Latent Space Podcast has put together a list of reasons, which I think really resonates. So here he says, why MCP1 in short? So one here is the becoming de facto standard or not exactly equivalent, but alternative approaches like OpenAI and Langchain, Langgraph. All right, now Langchain had this concept of tool calls, which has been used a lot, but then there are other providers like OpenAI or even Lama Index. They also tried to come up with their own approaches. But according to him, the reason that MCP is getting a lot of traction is that it's an AI native version of an old idea. So we need standards. One standard is REST APIs that everybody is using, HTTPS, TCPs are other standards. In the age of LLMs, we actually need a standard so that we can standardize the data connection between the LLM and our own data sources. The second is MCP is an old the second is MCP is an open standard with big backer. In, in this case, the backer is Anthropic and Anthropic has been actually making updates to it. And it's also good to see that now companies like OpenAI and even Google are thinking about adopting this standard. So Anthropic has the best developer AI brand. I totally agree with it. Cloud has been an awesome coding LLM if you don't run into rate limits. And then MCP is based off of LSP, which is language server protocol. This is an existing successful protocol. LSP standardize how to add support for programming languages across whole ecosystem of development tools. So this is basically, again, it's a native version of an old idea. In, in a very similar way, MCP is just trying to standardize how to integrate additional context and tools into the ecosystem of LLM applications. When Anthropic announced MCPs back in November, they actually had a number of different clients, servers, and tools available, which made it actually useful. Okay, we already have seen a whole community being built around it, which is pretty great. So for example, Cursa has support for MCP servers. Similarly, Ventsurf also has support for it. However, you need to be very careful when you are choosing MCP server. There are GitHub repos with thousands of different servers that are available. In a subsequent video, I'll show you how you can use these servers in AI IDs like Cursor and Windsurf. But you need to be careful when you are choosing these servers. You want to make sure that they are properly vetted because you are essentially exposing your API keys, your data through these servers. So a couple of other comments. At the moment, MCPs are definitely getting a lot of tractions, so it's really good to know them. However, we don't know what the future is going to hold. It's a very fluid situation. So there might be other companies who will come up with their own standards, but we want to look at an open source standard that the industry is going to adopt. MCPs seems to be that standard at the moment. 
Second, you don't have to wrap everything in an MCP server. There are still use cases for tools and function calls, especially um, if you have a small number of tools, it's probably better to implement them themselves rather than adding this extra layer of abstraction. Okay, so I hope this clarifies what exactly an MCP is and what are the different components. I am going to be creating more developers focused content. So we're going to look at a few examples of how you can build your own MCP server, especially now Gemini is going to be also adding support for it. So you could use it with Anthropic, OpenAI or Gemini models. And hopefully there is going to be support by the open source models as well. So if you are interested in content like that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.